All right, so we'll talk about Fibonacci numbers. You're all familiar with Fibonacci numbers. Every number is the sum of the previous two. And the interesting question is, what is the nth Fibonacci number? Of course, you can always compute the nth Fibonacci number by just doing n sums. But it would be nice to have a closed form expression for the Fibonacci number, for, uh, for the Fibonacci numbers. And there is such a formula, and it was known for a long time, but it can be derived in a very nice way using the eigenvalue decomposition. And actually, it's a brilliant application of the eigenvalue decomposition, which, as I've said before, uh, is, very is very useful, but largely in theoretical applications. In practice, the eigenvalue decomposition is rarely computed just because it's very expensive decomposition to compute. But let me show you what the formula will end up being, and then we'll get to it. We'll get there. So the n Fibonacci number, if I recall correctly, is given as phi to the nth power, where phi is the golden ratio. Well, I'll, I'll introduce it in a moment. I believe minus, minus 1 to the nth power divided by phi to the n divided by phi squared plus 1. So that's the closed, closed form formula for the nth Fibonacci number. You see it kind of grows exponentially. And phi, the golden ratio, has a lot of beautiful properties. Is uh, 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. All right. So that's, that's the formula. So we're going to derive it. This formula was known to Bernoulli's and maybe even before then, but uh, the shortest derivation I know is through the eigenvalue decomposition. So it's really very much an application of linear algebra and a very nice and vivid application of linear algebra. So let me remind you what the eigenvalue decomposition is. For a matrix A, it's not defective. Let's say it's 3 by 3 and it has three eigenvalues, v1, v2, v3, and lambda1, lambda2, and lambda3. So that means that a v1 equals lambda1 v1. This is saying that v1 is an eigenvector, and lambda1 is the corresponding eigenvalue. And similarly for v2, a v2 equals lambda2 v2, and it says the same thing for v2 and lambda2. And the third one is a v3 equals lambda3 v3. So these three relationships say that the matrix A, which is 3 by 3, has three eigenvectors and three corresponding eigenvalues. And of course, it's the great advantage of the matrix notation that it is able, among other things, to group separate identities into a single matrix identity. So this is three essentially vector identities, and it's possible to group them into a single matrix identity. In the following way, you take the matrix A, I'll just draw it schematically like this, and then you arrange the vectors V1, V2, and V3 as columns into a matrix that looks like this. The first column is V1, the second column is V2, and the third column is V3. And this matrix is actually called the capital matrix X, and it appears in all sorts of applications, a very common thing. And the result, of course, by looking at these three relationships, is another matrix whose columns are lambda 1 V1, lambda 2 V2, and lambda 3 v3. And so I could have written, I can write it in a similar way by just writing lambda 1 v1, lambda 2 v2, lambda 3 v3, but I can also represent that sort of thing, multipli multiplying each column by a number, by a matrix multiplication as well. So what I would get is, once again, v1, actually the same matrix x, v2, v3, and here is the elementary matrix that affects the, the multiplication of these columns by lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. It's the diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. 
So this is once again the matrix X. That's what makes this decomposition work so nicely. And the matrix consisting of the eigenvalues on the diagonal is called the matrix, it's called lambda, capital lambda. Okay, and this, of course, is the matrix A. So what I've done so far is nothing fancy. I just combined these three separate vector identities with a matrix thrown in there into a single matrix identity. So that's always a positive thing. If you're able to do that, then the entire apparatus of matrix multiplication is at your disposal, and it converts you know, problem into even more of an algebra problem where the rules of algebra are on your side and can help you along. So let's write down the identity that we have. We have AX equals X lambda. And of course, this is not the sort of identity where X can be canceled, because the only way that X could be canceled, the way you cancel matrices in linear algebra, is by multiplying by the inverse. But because the order of the matrices matters, you have to multiply by the inverse consistently, on the consistent side. So we can either multiply by X inverse on the left, both sides of this identity, or by X inverse on the right. So because we want the decomposition of A, we'll write will multiply both sides of this identity by x inverse on the right. And we'll end up with a equals x lambda x inverse. And I'm going to box this because this is called the eigenvalue decomposition. And it has a lot of if, you're, if you have a matrix and you've calculated the eigenvalue decomposition, there's lots of things that you can now do easily with that matrix A. I guess the most important thing for our application today is the fact that you can multiply the matrix A by itself, raise it to any power very easily. And here is how it'll take place. For example, let me now erase this part and we'll calculate A squared. And then we'll immediately see what a to any power n is. Okay, so a squared. Well, if a is available in its eigenvalue decomposition form, then a squared is a times a, which is x lambda x inverse times a itself, x lambda x inverse. And you see that there is x inverse right next to x, so that drops out because it's identity. That's the beauty of the eigenvalue decomposition is when you multiply a by itself, x inverse always touches x and drops out. And we have lambda next to lambda, which becomes lambda squared. And of course, that's a matrix that's easy to square because squaring a diagonal matrix is equivalent to squaring each of its diagonal entries. So that's very easy. So the result looks very much like A itself, except the middle matrix lambda is squared. And of course from here, it's very easy to see that A to the N is X lambda to the N X inverse. And that's the application of the eigenvalue decomposition that we'll find today. We'll be able to formulate this calculation of the Fibonacci numbers as a matrix multiplication. You'll see. And then it'll be essential to raise that matrix to the nth power, and we'll do it by calculating the eigenvalue decomposition of the matrix, and then using this trick. Are there any questions? We're good?